We've looked now at powers with natural, whole, and integral exponents. We're now going to look at powers that have a rational or an exponent that can be written as a fraction. We know that a rational number is any number that we can write as a fraction in a over b form. So a rational exponent is any exponent that can be written as a fraction in a over b form. So if you see an exponent of let's say 0 0.6, this is a power with a rational exponent because we know 6 tenths is equivalent to 3 fifths. If we can write that decimal as a fraction, it is a rational exponent, and then we're going to use the same exponent laws that we've been using in order to simplify those expressions. So let's practice simplifying. So we can see in our first example that we are multiplying two powers with the same base. When we multiply powers with the same base, we add the exponents. Now remember, when we add fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So in this case, we already have a common denominator of 5, so we add the numerators, 3 plus 6 is 9, and the denominator stays the same. Now in this example here, again, we're multiplying powers with the same base, so we're going to add the exponents. When we add fractions, two-thirds plus three-quarters, we need a common denominator. So I can see that my lowest common denominator is 12. If this denominator is 3, so I'm going to have to multiply it by 4 to get a denominator of 12. I'm going to multiply the numerator by 4 to keep it equivalent. This second denominator is 4. I'm going to multiply that by 3 to get my common denominator of 12. I'm going to multiply the numerator by 3 to keep it equivalent. And then we can now go ahead and add the numerators. 8 plus 9 is 17. The denominator stays the same. And then check to see if we can reduce that fraction. In this case, we can't. So that is our final answer. In this next one here, we have 4 divided by 12. So we can go ahead and reduce that. So 4 is the largest number that will divide evenly into both the numerator and denominator. We are now dividing powers with the same base, so we're going to subtract the exponents. 2.5 minus 0 0.5 is 2, so we leave this just as x squared divided by 3. So we have a coefficient of 1 here, but we don't need to write that down. In our next example, we have a power raised to a power. So we're going to have 3.3 times 1 third. We're going to multiply those exponents. Now remember, the denominator on this 3.3 is 1. So we're going to multiply the numerators, 3.3 times 1. 1 times 3 is 3 on the denominator. And then we can go ahead and reduce this. 3.3 divided by 3 is 1.1. The convention in mathematics is the only time we can leave a decimal in the final answer is if you have a decimal given to you in the original original question. So in this case, I can leave this as a decimal because my original question had a decimal in it. Now in this next one here, we have 8 times x to the power of 1 half to the power of 2 thirds. So because this exponent is outside of the brackets, it gets applied to everything in the brackets, including that 8. So don't forget to do that. Let's maybe write this down first of all. And then you can take your calculator and we're going to evaluate 8 to the power of 2 thirds. We will be able to do this without a calculator after our next lesson. But for right now, we're going to take 8 to the power of 2 thirds. So the way that we enter this is we're going to type in the base and then our exponent key. And then we're going to, especially if you have a TI-83 calculator, you're going to go bracket 2 divided by 3, close the bracket, and then if you're on a TI-84 plus, you can write arrow over, which will take you out of the exponent. You don't need the brackets on this calculator, but you will on the TI-83. So try your calculator, and we should get a value of 4. And then we also have to reduce all fractions. So we can see that 2 divides evenly into the numerator and denominator. If you have 1 and you weren't sure, you could always type in. So again, 2 divided by 6 equals. It will give you a decimal. If you go up to the math menu, number 1 is fractions. So we're going to go enter and then enter again. If this fraction does reduce, then your calculator will do it for you and we get one third. Grade 10 mathematics gives you a lot of those fundamental base skills that you need in order to perform higher levels of mathematics in the coming years. So just be careful with the calculator. You don't want to be entering every little thing in there. It's going to bog you down. So the more that you can do mentally accurately, the more successful you're going to be as you move up.
All right, so in this next one, take a look at the inside of the bracket. See if you can simplify this first. So I can see that I'm dividing powers, but they do not have the same base. So there's nothing we can do there. We also are raising both the numerator and denominator to a power. The exponent is outside of the bracket. So we know if we have a power raised to a power, we're going to multiply. When I multiply fractions, I'm multiplying numerators and denominators. So remember, if we don't see the denominator, we have a denominator of one. So three times one is three. 1 times 3 is 3. So mentally, I know that 3 divided by 3 gives me an exponent of 1. And then down here, 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. 6 divided by 3 gives me an exponent of 2 on the denominator. So this is what I'm referring to. If you're going to use your calculator and enter 3 times bracket 1 divided by 3, close the bracket to get 1, and then 6 times bracket 1 divided by 3, close the bracket to get 2, that's going to take you a lot longer. So we can just see 3 divided by 3 gives us an exponent of 1. 6 divided by 3 gives us an exponent of 2. With our next one here, we also have a power raised to a power. I'm going to multiply those exponents. Anything times zero gives me a value of zero. And we know five to the power of zero is equal to one. And then in this last one, we have a negative exponent of three-fifths. In order to eliminate a negative exponent, remember we're going to reciprocate that base. So right now we have m over one. We're gonna flip that and we're gonna get one over m. My exponent, which was negative three-fifths, now becomes positive three-fifths. So be really careful. It is the base that we are reciprocating, not the exponent. So this three over five stays three over five. It's just that it was a negative, now it's positive. So be really careful. It's the base we reciprocate. That changes the sign on the exponent. We're not reciprocating the exponent. We're now going to evaluate, so that means get the value of each of these powers. So we can see that we have 25 to the power of negative one half. To eliminate that negative exponent, we're going to reciprocate the base. So 25 divided by one, we flip that, and it's going to become one divided by 25. We now have a positive exponent. Exponent. And then in the next lesson, we won't need a calculator, but for right now, you can enter 25 to the power of 1 divided by 2, and we will get a value of 5. Again, there's nothing in here that we can simplify. In order to eliminate that negative exponent, we're going to reciprocate that base. When I enter 81 to the power of 3 quarters into the calculator, we get a value of 27. Same thing here, we have a negative exponent we're going to eliminate. There's nothing I can do to simplify the inside of this bracket. So when I reciprocate this, because I don't wanna have a negative in the denominator, I'm gonna leave that negative in the numerator, and then we're just gonna flip over 27 divided by 125. My exponent, which was negative, now becomes positive. When you enter this into your calculator, you're going to go bracket, negative 27 divided by 125, close the bracket to the power of two divided by three, and you're going to get a positive 9 25ths. This one again, we cannot reduce the inside of the bracket any further. I have a negative exponent, so we're going to reciprocate. I'm gonna leave that negative in the numerator, and we're going to have 243 divided by 32. My exponent is now positive. Again, you have to make sure you go in bracket, negative 243 divided by 32, close the bracket to the power of three divided by five, and you're going to get a negative 27 eighths. Well, this is interesting. Why when we enter this, do we get a positive value? And when we enter this, we get a negative value. So there's a couple of things you have to watch. So first of all, you do have to put the entire base in brackets, otherwise you will get a negative here and that is the wrong answer. So make sure you use those brackets on your calculator. And then also make sure this is a negative sign. If you accidentally press the minus sign, you will get an error message. So negative is down here. And then in terms of why this is a positive value and this is a negative value, it has to do with the numerator on each of those exponents. So this here happens to be an even number, this happens to be an odd number. So stay tuned for the next lesson to see how that impacts the value of each of those fractions. In our final example, we now have an equation. So we have one side 
equal to another side. And we have to solve to determine the value of that variable P. So solve means get the solution. So what is P equal to that would make that left side equal to the right hand side? So the first thing you want to do is see if you can simplify either side. So on the right, we just have a single power. On the left, we can see that we are dividing two powers with the same base. We know that when we divide two powers with the same base, we can subtract the exponents. So we have P and then minus negative two. Remember minus and negative turns to a positive when we multiply those signs. So we can simplify this, keep the base the same, and our exponent is p plus two, and that's going to equal what we have here on the right-hand side. We now have what's called an exponential equation, where in the exponent we have a variable. So I'm going to play a little game here. Let's say for a minute that I tell you we have two powers that are equal or equivalent to one another, and if this one is two to the power of three, I have the same base over here, what is the one number I could put up here that would make those two sides equivalent or equal? And you're right, we would have to put a three here. Okay, let's try another one. If I tell you that we have negative five in brackets to the power of four, and it is equal to negative five in brackets to the power of one number, what number would you have to put here? And you're right again, it's gonna be a four. Okay, let's try another one. So this time I tell you that we have seven to the power of something and that's equal to seven to the power of 14. If only one number can go here, what number would you have to put to make the left side equal the right side? And good job, it is going to be 14. So I can see that you agree if we have two powers that are equal, if the base is equal, therefore the exponents must also be equal. So we can use that concept over here when we solve this equation. My base of x is equal, therefore those exponents also have to be equal to one another. So this is the symbol for therefore, just three dots like that. The exponent has to equal the exponent. We now have a single linear equation which you've been solving for a few years. So in order to isolate that variable, we need to bring this to zero. So in order to bring that to zero, I'm going to subtract two, which means I'm going to subtract two over here. Algebra 101, what you do to one side, you do to the other to keep it balanced. So now we can see that we have two fractions we're subtracting. We know that in order to subtract, we need a common denominator. We can also see that the lowest common denominator is two. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by two to keep that equivalent. And we can see that two is equivalent to four over two. Now we can go ahead and subtract the numerators. Five minus four is one. Keep the denominator the same. And then always when solving an algebraic equation, we're going to verify our answer or we're going to check our answer. So we're going to take what we think that variable is equal to and we're gonna substitute it back into the place of the variable and we're looking to see does the left side equal the right side. So when we go to simplify this, again, we are dividing two powers with the same base. So we're gonna subtract those exponents. We're gonna have one half minus negative two. And then we know that we need a common denominator when we go to subtract. We also know that if we multiply those signs, a minus times a negative gives us a positive. So we can go ahead and do that. Now we can add the numerators, keep the denominator the same, and then we can see the left side does equal the right side, and that's the beauty of algebra, is you will know if your solution is correct or not.